Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today is another one of those days where I make something that's mildly questionable, and as you can see by my builds here, that is pretty much every day. Today's the day I'm going to attempt to make a car that has 100% wheel spin, which is theoretically possible now that cars can make such ridiculous power that I, yeah, I, I'm sure that we can make something that basically has zero traction fairly easily. That is the goal, basically. So what I'm going to try to do is make just a, a car with a ridiculous engine, thin wheels, and make it so it feels like you're driving on ice at all times. I haven't thought of a body for this build yet, but um, <laughs> first of all, it needs to be something functional. And then second, it needs to be able to take a big lad of an engine, preferably with four turbos. Okay, this is my choice for pain here. Let's see if it'll work. Uh, so making the car light is actually an important factor in this because lightness means more wheel spin, obviously if we have less weight, then that's less uh, traction, so down goes the weight. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit, this car is mid-engined, so the weight balance is going to be all over here, but let's just go mid-longitudinal, I think theoretically we can probably get the most amount of engine in there with this setup. And how big that engine is going to be will be found out today. Now, there are a couple ways of doing this. I want to make it all-wheel drive because I'm hoping to be able to spin all four wheels 100%. We may have to drop down to rear wheel if that doesn't work. But for now, let's just go big boy power. V10, not going to work. Too long. Boxer 6, though. Hmm, that would actually fit. Uh, and potentially a V8 as well. Yeah, it, length seems to be the biggest problem, so we could probably get away with not maximum size, but pretty close, maybe? 6.6 .6 liter magnesium 90 degree V8 is definitely an option. I'm going to mix things up a little bit today. We're actually going to go billet flat plane crank because I hardly ever build flat plane. And I'm just going to kind of go for stuff that makes sense. What I am going to try to do is AI tune the engine. We'll see if that will work. Um... It says turbo engines will temporarily not be tuned, so that's a bit of a problem. Maybe we can go naturally aspirated and just make a ridiculous amount of horsepower. We're going to be running compressed gas in this, so it's a propane and propane accessories vehicle. Uh, with basically just the best stuff that you can get. I'm just kind of slapping it on and I want to see where this goes. Um, obviously we don't care about the environment. Let's just... Well, 743 horsepower is not going to be enough. I'm going to quickly hit the AI tune, tune it for power, and we'll see what that can give us naturally aspirated. 870, woo. But the exhaust is so tiny. I mean, that's not a bad amount of power. That's fairly decent, but I think we can do better than that. Yeah, 860 horsepower, no turbos. I don't think that's going to be enough. Pretty good curve, though, actually. Uh, not bad at all in that department, but yeah, we're, we're going to need more power than that if we're going to have the ultimate wheel spin. The thing that I'm mostly concerned about here is the low-end torque. We do have, let's just say 2000 RPM, we're making about 800 Newton meters, so we'll keep that in mind as I switch over to turbo. Yes, two turbos, smart boost, and a race preset. This might break the game. 1,700 horsepower. That's a little bit better than what we were making before. Just a, just a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do here is just start to play with things until we get more power because, yeah, the, the turbo race preset is a little generous or maybe not generous enough with some of the sizing of things. Like, I can do this more. And you'll notice that 2,000... Uh, RPM, we are currently making 1332 newton meters of torque. And as always with this preset, it basically doesn't consider the boost meter for some reason. It's very, very, very conservative with that. So we make now 2167 horsepower and that's at 6000 RPM. I don't really want to go lower than that unless we have to. Um, so we'll just crank the other stuff up until it sort of gives us the power we need. So it seems like the biggest problem here is actually the springs and lifters just not being big enough <laughs> or strong enough, I guess. I put it up to 6800 RPM here and you can see that, uh, yeah, we can just make absolutely ridiculous power at high RPMs with this current setup and the pistons and conrods and crank 
basically don't want to be alive anymore, so I might have to fix that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with some engine issues, just a little bit. Um, and then the intercooler as well probably could use an increase in size. Uh, and maybe the compressor too. The power is just endless. There's a ton of ways to tune these days. Okay, we're making less instant torque, but I'm hopeful to be able to keep the car over 3000 RPM. So we'll kind of see how that works. The curve is rocky. The engine overall is bad, but it should be enough to rocket us into the territory I want to be in. The weakness with this entire build so far might just be my choice of body, but I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so I'm not super concerned about the actual look of it. Let's just get to the mechanics of it first, and we'll get into this. <laughs> so I'm going to go manual uh, four speed, because at least theoretically we want the gears to be very, very short. We'll see how well this works. Um, and then I was thinking we could do a manual locker as well. So the tires, <laughs> this is important. Um, yeah, uh, let's just go like all terrain. Maybe chunky off-road would be better. Just looking purely at the weight uh, stats over there, you can see chunky off-road here uh, has a 0.67 corner and grip. That's the second from the bottom and the acceleration grip is 1.07 um, and it only goes up as you run through this and if you go to radial uh, it is just very slightly better but <laughs> I mean, the thing with cross play is you can only get this uh, which is extremely small wow those are so so small i'm gonna make them out of uh, carbon fiber and i'm just gonna leave this at the lowest perhaps they might burst though okay we'll, we'll just go midway and just hope for the best just so you're paying attention that tire size is like a spare it's 135 80 and then 21 <laughs> 21 inch rims which is quite large okay so i just ran through the build and i like what i see here in the warnings the third one from the top this car has severe issues with wheel spin Yes, please. <laughs> Brakes are very uh, small. I haven't made them any bigger. And oversteer is obviously a problem. All-wheel drive and basically no tire at all. This is like if your car was just running spares. Like you put spares on all four corners and that's what you decided to do with your 28 horsepower mid-engine uh, absolute ripper of a vehicle. <laughs> so I'm concerned, but let's see in the drivetrain. Where, what are we doing here? Fuel efficiency, no, 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 we need this. 24%, Oh, If you look in the gears, it's 100% in first, 89 in second, 91, and then 93 in third and fourth. So pretty good so far, actually. Okay, I got the numbers to be a little bit better. We got 100, 92, 95, and 99 with a 25% over there on the acceleration versus speed graph. At this number here, I have gotten up to 88% before. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with this. I was hoping that it would be worse. Even with an open diff, which is probably the most realistic for this sort of ridiculousness, um, it doesn't seem to affect it that much. I wanted to have the locker so we can lock all the wheels together and do like four wheel skids, but uh, we'll see if that actually means anything. <laughs> so I just thought about something. If we have more gears, then each one of them is shorter uh, because you're expected to be changing through them all as you speed up. So if we have seven gears, that means first gear is extremely short. You can see a 6.75 to one ratio down into uh, four gears and it's a 3.48 to one ratio. So this one is way, way shorter. To make matters worse, if you turn spacing all the way down, uh, it says less wheel spin, but in this case it actually gives more. 100% guarantee all the way up to 156 kilometers an hour. That's pretty mental. And I'm putting it slightly more to the front, which also is offsetting the weight balance, which I believe is more to the rear. So long story short, this thing should be absolutely mental. I'm very curious to try it out, but let's finish the rest of the stuff here. One thing we could probably do as well, like this car is extremely light. Um, I might be able to get away with making these even smaller, which <laughs> is great. So I've managed to make a car with 0% sportiness uh, and wheels that are essentially bike wheels. Um, so I'm pleased with myself to say the least. One thing I was concerned about is if this is going to make the top speed much worse and it kind of has. <laughs> We're currently running uh, 
295, that's still fast, but it's not quite as much as I was hoping. Okay, the only other thing I can think of is probably just making the camber worse so it's riding on only the inside portion of the wheel, but for now I want to see if this works by itself. Let's take it into BeamNG Drive and see. I really need to go through my folder and erase some of this garbage, like what on earth is this? Ah, there we go, the wheelie spin one. Let's see how she drives. I'm extremely curious. Oh, that's a good start. It seems to be at least not exploding when it lands. <laughs> that's always a bonus. Oh my goodness, the noise this thing makes. I just put on my headphones. I probably should have had them on earlier, but man. Holy crap. The flat plane crank, man. I need to be working with that more. Okay, the volume's down, so there'll be less deafening stuff going on here. So you can see our diffs there. We have the front, center, and rear. Uh, so we should be able to... Uh, lock the wheels together as is necessary to make this into, s <laughs> into even more of a disaster than it already is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, wow. So the, the front wheels are spinning faster than the rears. I need to lock the center diff. I want to see... Oh, sorry, that's the rear diff. Let's lock the transfer case to make sure we get that full all-wheel drive effect. Rev her up and... <laughs> Time to drift, boys. Let's go. Yeah, so because first gear is a very, very short gear, uh, I can just hold it. <laughs> and we have no cooling problems or anything. But this car has endless power to be able to just stay spinning these wheels whenever I want. So um, I think the gearing has actually done me some good. The flames out the back are definitely adding quite a bit to this. I'm very very impressed um, and I think that this car has essentially zero traction which means also it would break very very poorly okay let's set it up for the absolute best launch we can get here um, this is with all the diffs locked so all the wheels are conjoined no openness uh, everything should be rolling at once and still with a quick rev it smokes all four tires. <laughs> you know, 2,900 horsepower may have been a little bit overkill. Um, you don't need that much to smoke wheels this thin. Okay, so I'm going to head over to the drag strip. Um, the thing that I said about this car feeling like it was going to be driving on ice was ridiculously true, because that's exactly how this feels. You're basically on ice at all times, and that means as well, once I'm done with the drag strip, we're going to drive on ice with a car that already feels like it's driving on ice. Oh, I actually have a little bit of traction here, hey! Now this is going to be interesting, how fast is this car? Uh, revving her up, and... Okay, never mind. I'll, I'll start from a, a dead stop. <laughs> That's our first time in gears. You know, it has no traction enough to be able to actually utilize the rest of the gearing. Okay, so we're down at the end of the drag strip. I'm gonna go the other way without revving too hard. Just sticking it out at first gear. Ah, no, as soon as it hits boost, it, it's gone. <laughs> that, uh, is to be expected. I want to get up into seventh. Yeah, we're still spinning the wheels in seventh. Um, I can't say that I'm particularly surprised by that. The car is actually only doing 150 kilometers an hour. I'm not doing anything, by the way, at the moment. It's just doing itself with the throttle down. But uh, it says it's doing 300. <laughs> I think that says enough. Also, the wheel being absolutely warped at the rear. Okay, this car is so fast, it can easily drive backwards. <laughs> Oh man, okay, let's find some ice. Aha, luckily for you, I happen to know a place. Just over here is the ice rink in this map, and, uh, oh. Yeah, okay, it's basically all momentum with this car. There's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do to change direction when you're actually on the ice. <laughs> I guess that's to be expected. These are supposed to be off-road tires, but... Yeah, <laughs> obviously they don't have ice picks attached to them, or studs of any kind. I can move myself a little bit, but not enough to actually do anything. 
Now I'm kind of curious, uh, what's it going to take to get us up one of these ramps up here? You know, one thing I'm completely shocked about is the fact that this car is dead nuts reliable. At this point, it hasn't caused any problems at all. <laughs> it's so much power, so much forgiveness. Okay, so this is the uh, rough patch of asphalt. We'll see what the car can do on that. Considering it struggles with anything at all, I'm assuming that this is not going to go particularly well. Just a little bit of throttle. Oh, not bad. I should stop assuming things so much because, uh, okay, I'm completely stuck up here. <laughs> I'm jerking the wheels back and forth. If I lose a wheel off this, I might be screwed. Oh, come on. Yes, yes, okay. Down the ice ramp we go. And... Yes! Freedom! Okay, it's too rough to actually do anything. It's basically a ski jump, but in reverse. Alright, we're here at the Hirochi Raceway, very lovely uh, written in the background. This is not the car that you were looking at previously, this is instead a Dodge Charger variant, I guess, uh, that I drive in BeamNG. It's my default car, and one that I made a long time ago now. It's definitely due to be replaced, but I like it so much that I haven't wanted to do that. Now, this is how a normal car, I guess, goes around this circuit. I mean, this car is far from far from normal considering how much power it has uh, and also <laughs> it's just a little bit ridiculous uh, it does drift and it can wheel spin whenever it wants but uh, yeah this is a fairly decent example of an average vehicle average performance vehicle going around this track this is the wheel spin oh wait this is the wrong car this is the wheel spin extraordinaire let's see what it'll do around a figure of eight such as this um, First of all, I'm going to go ahead and lock everything, once again trying to make sure that everything is all synced up, and I'm going to drift my way around this course to the best of my non-existent drifting abilities. Now the corners are super elevated, i.e. banked, uh, which is going to make things a little bit more interesting for me, um, but I'm up for the challenge. After a couple of runs, I think I might be able to not get it. Ooh, maybe a little bit better though. So people often request that I make drift cars, but I suck so much at drifting that I don't think that it's actually worthwhile for me to make a drift car, because I don't really know what kind of needs to go into it to make it tune, like, tuned properly so that it'll drive the courses the way that it should. Um, like in my mind, drifting is all about that wheel speed, but at the same time, it's also such a weird sport, like yeah, a lot of drift cars will have automatic transmissions, for example, because they want to lock it into a certain ratio. That's something I find to be very strange, and like, I just don't understand it. Not enough, at least. Okay, the ramp uh, kind of <laughs> poses a little bit of a problem as we run over it, but these corners are really what I'm trying to master, and my angles have been extreme, but my recoveries have not been amazing. Um, Oh, that's a that's a drift though. That was good. Oh no! Oh no! Exit. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Almost got a clean one right through there. Okay, I'm just gonna try full throttle, full speed essentially. Is that going to make a difference? And now we swing out way too wide, way way too wide. And we're only. I mean, I was going under 100 kilometers an hour at that point, so it's not like we're actually moving that fast. But still, <laughs> the car does not relent. We are relentlessly wheel spinning. You know, BeamNG has added some cool stuff that I want to quickly try, so let's find a little bit of a flatter area and see if I can't just test out full rear wheel drive. Probably a bad idea. Okay, after some struggle I managed to actually exit the track. That was difficult. Now, what I want to do quickly is just go into the vehicle config section in BeamNG. Um, and we have this whole tuning stuff now, which is really cool. We can change the fuel volume and all that. But we also have the torque split, which is really cool. Uh, so this is the power to the rear, I guess, and this power to the front, maybe. Um, I'm just going to go 100% and assume that that sends it all the way to the back. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's 100% rear wheel drive. No front wheel drive there, folks. Oh, it's struggling so much in rear wheel drive. It's a totally different car. Just that ratio is insane, oh my goodness. 
Wow, it's actually probably more drivable in full rear-wheel drive than it is in front-wheel drive comboed. Um, I'm surprised. Oh, you know, part of the reason why might be I'm only spinning one wheel. We gotta re-lock everything up again. Okay, locked rear diff, which means we got two wheel spins, and also a heck of a lot of boost. The <laughs> boost meter is going all the way to its limit over and over again. This engine is proving to be extremely reliable. Oh my goodness, uh, yeah, something is desperately wrong with it. One thing I want to try before we go today is front wheel drive. Is that going to be as slow as rear wheel drive? Ah, look at this, I found a skid pad, hey. I've used this before, in fact I think I used it in the last wheel spin video I did, um, which was an interesting video by itself. <laughs> we can leave some lovely marks on the grass. There's been a distinct lack of extreme spinning going on today, so I'm attempting to change that. Yeah, it doesn't want to sit still when it's doing this, it kind of wants to just go for some reason. Okay, maybe that's a bit better. I'm getting a little dizzy. Oh, that is so fast! <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay. <laughs> How fast can I go? Yeah, okay, come on. Come on. I think I saw 30 kilometers an hour last time this thing was spinning up. That is really, really quick. Let's try front wheel drive. Okay, apparently doing any kind of burnout with front wheel drive might have been a mistake because it doesn't want to do anything. However, this is fairly controllable, all things considered. We're basically just pulling the back wheels around. I mean, that's what front wheel drive is, but... Yeah, we're pulling them around with very, very little grip on the front. And with my front-wheel drive mid-engine car, I think it's time that I smashed into something before we called it a day. Full speed is the only way we're actually going to hear this engine rip. Oh no, <laughs> the brakes! Oh. Yeah, okay, that, that was less dramatic than I thought it was going to be. But I've actually managed to damage the car, so I'm going to consider that to be a fitting end for this big beast. I just want to say before you go, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. A little bit shorter than usual, but I don't mind doing some short weird builds every once in a while. I'm excited to be able to make more of these kind of dumb builds. It's just, I don't know, wheel spin is, is something that's always been fun, so why not take that to the next level and make something that does nothing except wheel spin. We may have to revisit this chassis in the future, give it some wide wheels and maybe a little bit better gearing, and see how this flat plane crank V8 can actually rip with 3,000 horses under the <laughs> hood, I was gonna say, but it's more like back glass. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching this. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. The channel's been growing and I am very pleased about that. Um, we're well past 50k now, and we're on that march to 100, and that is the uh, the end goal, I guess, is to, to make it to 100,000 subs, so that's, that's where I want to be, and you guys are really the only way I can get there. But until then, more weird builds, and then even after then, more weird builds. We'll just have to do some weird, crazy stuff when the time comes. 100k is going to be a lot of fun. Probably too much. See you then.